I'm Maggie Saylor, and I'm here with Leon Marucci, director of the new film, The Power of Few, which is premiering at Tinseltown here in Boardman on February 15th. How are you today? I'm good. I'm really happy to be back at BHS. Um, I know you were a Boardman student. What year did you graduate? I graduated in 1991. Does that sound like a long time ago? No, actually. <laughs> um, Feels like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> But it, bringing coming back brings in a lot of memories. It does, but you know, when I was here, uh, they didn't have this television studio, that, which is just blowing me away <laughs> to see what's happened. So it's great to see Boardman School support this for you guys. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. What an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, when you were in high school, I know you didn't have this particular program, but did you have any other classes, teachers, or programs that kind of helped you want to go into film? Or You know, I, I can't say that there were classes, but um, there was a teacher, Terry O'Halloran, and I, I don't know if he still teaches in the, he was a stadium drive teacher, but he was our swim coach. I was a swimmer and, and in the summers at uh, Boardman Swim Club, there were opportunities that he gave us to f make short films. He turned practice into a movie set mm -hmm. and we used uh, the Boardman Swim Club as our backdrop for a uh, uh, little sci-fi 20-minute film. I think I was 12 or 13 when we made it and um, it's called The Twisted Lane Marker and that set me on my way as a filmmaker. That was the f first taste I got of, mm -hmm. at the time it was putting two VCRs together and just splicing and pausing and recording and um, those were the early days of editing for me and from that's where it started. So from that point on we did a, I think two different Twisted Lane Marker movies and then every chance I could get to make movies mm -hmm. with my friends around the neighborhoods, you know, we did it. I had to sneak the camera out of the house a lot, which didn't make my parents too happy, but um, it was always safe and we returned it mm -hmm. in good, good uh, condition. Worked out. It worked out for <laughs> sure. So I did, you know, I just made movies whenever I could, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, so that teacher definitely, uh, he opened the door for us to do that, so. So by the time you were in high school, do you think that you pretty much knew that you wanted to be a filmmaker or? Well, it was something I always did. I think I, I probably didn't know it and pursue it as a reality for a career in life until college. I think it was at Ohio State that, um, you know, I tried a, a couple different approaches to a career, mm -hmm. uh, considered a couple different majors, but in the end, it, I always gravitated back to the storytelling of, mm -hmm. you know, filmmaking and you know uh, I visited Los Angeles and uh, kind of saw that it, it it's real it could be a career so mm -hmm. it was an easy choice to yeah. follow that early ambition mm -hmm. um, most actors aspiring actors and move and filmmakers have difficulty even getting some sort of modest success while you have worked with some established actors um, what would you say to a filmmaker or an actor who's trying to kind of break through into the film industry? Well, I think you just have to have a don't give up attitude. Mm -hmm. I, that's number one. You have to um, pursue it through all the rejection because there's a ton of it. There's mm -hmm. certainly a lot of people vying for it, especially when you go to a town like a city like Los Angeles or New York or major metro places. There's a lot of competition. And you just can't give up. And for me personally, I never, it never, it just, just because it was something I always did, there was never even the thought of giving up or giving in. So if you have that, I think you're already on your way. Mm -hmm. And it's just if you immerse yourself in that industry, whether it's acting or any part of the, the creative industry that exists out there, I think you, everybody finds some level of success, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Whether it's me. Still Certainly, still if something. you're doing it and you can make a career out of it and a life out of it, then it's a success right mm -hmm. there. I agree. Right? Um, I know you founded your own production company. Can you tell me a little bit how that got started? Steel Yard Pictures was formed in uh, 2000 in Los Angeles. And when I moved out to LA, I started off being a production assistant, which is a nice word for sweeping up trash and dumping the uh, <laughs> cleaning up catering and on the sets of big movies. But my first few years in Los Angeles was uh, on some major film sets. Um, I worked on the Truman Show at Universal Studios with Jim Carrey and Wesley Snipes' uh, vampire action thing, The Blade. Uh, those were 
big eye openers and I saw kind of a snapshot on how massive and intense the, the film business can be. Um, and after that, I started gravitating towards more independent films and, and I connected with a, uh, a studio that was making more modestly budgeted films and that's where I was able to start to see how a movie could be made at a reasonable budget. I mean, because if you're not studio backed and have, you know, 50 to 100 to 200 million dollars behind a project, you know, you have to find another way to do it. And working with some independent studios, I was able to look closely at uh, how it's done on a more modest budget. And um, that's when uh, the decision was made to start a production company that I could, um, could sustain me in, in Los Angeles to do work in, to cover myself across commercial work, industrial work, um, live action, our short films were produced through that. And so over the years, Steel Yard evolved into really a, a multimedia company. Mm -hmm. In 2004, we started an interactive arm with the advances in the internet. So, um, and that's something that we tied into the, our feature films along the way was I including a web component. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, through this company, you have not only written, produced, and directed the Power of Few, but you have also produced, written, and directed another film and two other short films. Do you view those as as large of a success as The Power of Few, or do you think? Well, it goes back to the idea of success. At the time, those were major successes for me. Absolutely, just to when you set out and you you know you kind of. It's about finishing the project. A lot of times I've met a lot of filmmakers who start projects, they get them so far and they just, for whatever reason, from financing to interest to support, they fizzle out at various stages. So everything that I've been able to complete and finish and put on the shelf and, you know, I, I'm, I look at it as a success. Mm -hmm. I mean, film business is, it's incredible when it happens. It's, you know, so much can go wrong. You So much can fall through and so, those were successes, um, and they also were stepping stones to towards getting into more of a uh, making this a career and making um, a film like The Power of You is mm -hmm. to be able to attract talent to a bigger project to um, get the backers who support it mm -hmm. right to get the distributed the distribution uh, working. Mm -hmm. So certainly. Yeah. Um. For those who don't know, what exactly is The Power of You about? What exactly it's about, <laughs> you guys are gonna have to go to the cinema and find out. I can tell you just um, in my most canned summary, it's religious conspiracy colliding with urban crime on a day of danger, mystery, and possible transformation. Mm -hmm. It's basically five short stories simultaneously occurring on one afternoon and we get to experience each story through a, a unique character's point of view and find out how they are connected to this moment that occurs um, in connection with a pretty high stakes smuggling operation. Sounds intense. It's intense, it's <laughs> complex, but it, it's, a, it's a fun ride. I'm excited to, to hear how people react. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to write a film like that? I'm a fan of, I've always been a big fan of non-linear filmmaking through the years. Um, uh, films like Pulp Fiction and I, I Run Lola Run, I go back to films like Rashomon, which was the first of its kind really, that, that took the medium of film and storytelling and said, you know, we could tell a story, y you can tell a human experience or a, um, a story in a more layered approach. It doesn't always have to be A to B to Z. A to B to C or um, you know the three act play when you're an editor and you're you know you start off piecing things together I think it's just it, it's much more fun to to you know experience those movies and put the puzzle together that's I've always been a fan of that so when I combine that with uh, at Ohio State I studied media and it was the first time I, I studied um, how would I say, critical, a, pro, a critical look at the media and seeing the, the biases that exist in media today. I think it, at the time, I don't think it was as apparent. You see people today, Fox News is clearly has their angle, MSNBC has theirs. At this time, I don't know that the world saw news like that. 
But when I was studying media and starting to see it that way, it made, you know, it made me think about biases in any storytelling. And is it possible to tell a story with a non-bias? That was a challenge I gave myself. And so when I, that idea merged with the idea of nonlinear storytelling, it really bloomed this thing where, hey, let's see how this can work as a story device in, um, in exploring biases in media. Mm -hmm. That's the very beginning of it. Yeah. That <laughs> might be Sounds deep. intense, yeah. Um, was it difficult having to cover all of the positions of writer, director, producer, or do you think that it kind of heightened your movie at all? Oh, I, I think so. I, as I've explained here today, I mean, my, I've been a filmmaker from day one, and it does start with the creative approach, from the writing and the vision to, to want to bring a story to life. And so, you become, as a filmmaker, when you set out to make your film, you know, with all of that passion behind it, you kind of by default become a producer mm -hmm. to get your movie made, to go through the, the business side of, of show business, because it is show business. And, the show part of it is the fun. That's the, the excitement and the, the, the thrills of working with actors and stunts and special effects and makeup and costume. But the business is something that's very real and you, know, you have to respect that. So, yeah. Um, well, I'm sure all of our viewers are very excited to see The Power of You. I know I am. Um, and the crew and I, Greatly appreciate you coming in for BSTN. I'm Maggie Saylor. <laughs>